How can old people carry on riding motorcycles? Catch you inside. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I hope you're enjoying the channel and the series. Please subscribe and hit the notifications bell down there. Uh, please leave lots of comments uh, as you're watching and stick around right at the end for some added information. So in this video, I'm talking about how elderly people can carry on riding motorcycles. Now, you might think that's a little bit offensive, you know, talking about uh, elderly people and riding motorcycles and everything. But the reality is that as we all get older, we're going to get a little bit slower, we're going to get a little bit weaker, and we're going to get a little bit less mobile. That even if we have all our faculties and all our physical capabilities. So there are certain things that we always need to do before we even attempt to get on a motorcycle. We need to analyse our physical capability our balance, our vision, our hearing, that kind of thing. Then we need to look at, okay, what about our physical mobility? Can we actually get onto the motorcycle? Can we actually handle the weight, that kind of thing? So as we get older, we may want to change the actual style of motorcycle that we ride and also the size of the motorcycle that we ride. Okay, so let's consider a rider who has uh, trouble in cocking their leg over the bike uh, to get over the saddle, for example, and sit on the bike. Well, in that case, they may consider actually choosing uh, a lower bike, uh, for example, a low rider, a bobber, that kind of thing. Something that actually sits a lot lower. So you have a lot less uh, trouble in getting your leg over the bike. Like, pardon the pun <laughs> um, but also you talk about sports bikes well sports bikes you know you're very in a racing prone position where you can put a lot of weight on your wrists uh, a lot of weight uh, a lot of tension on the joints in your hip and your knees that kind of thing as well so it might be a case that you might want to just move away from that sort of racing style but now i'm not talking about elderly at retirement age 90 years old 100 years old here i'm talking as we're getting into middle age and then moving on it really depends on your body type as well. As a general rule, regardless of how old you are, you need to find a bike that fits you, fits your physical frame. Now, are you a tall person? Are you a short person? Are you middle height? You know, what, what is your arm reach? What is your, uh, you know, uh, the length of your legs? That kind of thing. You know, we are all we are all beautiful people, and we are all of different shapes and sizes. So to be able to control a motorcycle effectively, we need to be able to operate it effectively. We need to be able to fit that motorcycle or the motorcycle needs to fit us, whichever way you want to look at it. So, you know, it's our physical ability to reach all the controls. You know, are we comfortable on the bike? Can we get on? Can we get off? Can we rescue the bike if, let's say, you know, we're stopping at a set of traffic lights and all of a sudden the bike wants to lean over? Do we have the physical strength to stop it leaning over? Um, do we have the physical strength to pick the bike up, you know, once it's fallen over, if, if ever that happens? Hopefully that will never happen. But depending on the riding environment, that might be a reality. If you go riding off-road on muddy tracks, on trails, in the ruts, that kind of thing, or over rocky terrain, you know, you're really challenging yourself and the bike. And at some point, you will drop the bike. You know, it's inevitable. So do you have the physical capability to lift it up? So we're not talking just about elderly people here. We're talking about all ages and the physical capability to be able to operate the motorcycle properly. Uh, in whichever uh, environment you're riding it, and also to be able to pick it up if you need to. Now, it doesn't mean that, let's say, you can't pick up your motorcycle off the ground, that you shouldn't be riding it. You know, I'm not saying that at all, but this is something that you might want to consider. Um, so, let's say, for example, how can elderly people uh, carry on riding motorcycles into their later life? Okay, so here are some tips that you might want to consider as you're getting older or any time you actually go riding on a motorcycle, you know, whether you are fit to ride. So, as we get older, we really need to start analysing our suitability to ride motorcycles. So, I always use this I'm SAFE acronym, which is... 
I stands for illness. Are you suffering from any illness that will, you know, affect your ability to ride a motorcycle? And I'm not talking about having a cold or something like that. I'm talking about something that's, you know, quite serious that, you know, will affect your ability to control your balance, your vision, your hearing, that kind of thing. M stands for medication. Are you taking any medication? I'm not talking about a paracetamol or a, you know, um, you know, a tonic or anything like that. I'm talking about something that will affect your ability to register for perception, for your balance, that kind of thing. Uh, S, are you under severe stress at the moment that actually is in affecting the way you're thinking about things, uh, the way you're rationalising, how you're making decisions and judgments? A, are you under the influence of alcohol? That's a very key here. Uh, even small amounts of alcohol will affect your uh, uh, body's ability to uh, control the motorcycle and make the right decisions at the right time. Uh, F, fatigue. You know, And we're not talking like just feeling tired. We're talking about chronic fatigue here. Are you really that tired that you really shouldn't be operating any machinery, let alone getting on a motorcycle? And E is the kind of emotional side of everything. Is there something going on in your life that you, know, you really should just not be driving or riding or anything like that? You know, is there... Have you had a you know a tragedy in the family, a death in the family? Have you had some financial worries? You know whatever it is, you know some emotional issue that's going on that you really need to be off the motorcycle. So that's in general for all ages. But as you get older, then you really need to start looking at your physical capability. So this really comes down to keeping yourself uh, in good health, having regular checkups, and also constantly monitoring how you're riding and your suitability to ride a particular style of motorcycle and also when you decide to go and ride your motorcycle as well so let's say for example you know we're all getting older you know i'm middle aged now so i do this all the time i'm looking at um my physical frame, my weight, my mobility. Well, what I'm doing, I always have physical exercises, do stretching uh, throughout the winter and also the summer. Just keep myself moving, keep all the joints moving as well. Well, obviously, you know, we'd all like to lose a little bit of weight, wouldn't we? So it's also about managing your weight and also your health as well. Okay, so as we get older, we really need to start looking at ourselves and also our physical shape, our physical conditioning. Are we able to ride that motorcycle? Is that motorcycle suited to us? So on and so forth. So we need to look at our, you know, our, our health, our general well-being, you know, our physical mobility. We need to keep have a bit more exercise instead of just going out on a motorcycle. Try cycling, try low impact uh, workouts, walking, you know, if you've got a dog, carry on walking the dog, uh, that kind of thing. Do lots of stretching exercises. If you think you're not going to be riding throughout the winter months, then keep yourself active in the winter. Keep yourself moving. So when you get on your bike again in the summer, you know, you'll be ready for it. You know, do stretching exercises and sitting down on a chair, reaching out for the handlebars, you know, pretending you're doing so, that kind of thing. You know, step over the bike. You know, keep yourself moving. Repeatedly do exercises that mimic what you would do on a motorcycle as well. So this is kind of physical conditioning. Obviously, you need to monitor your weight and your health and blood pressure and everything like that. You know, but that is just something you know, that we should all be doing anyway. So you know, keep yourself in physical condition. I'm not talking about having to go to the gym every day and you know lift dumbbells and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know what? That's not dumbbells, by the way. That's I don't know what that is. Anyway, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, but you know what I'm saying is just keep yourself active. You know, walk the dog, go cycling, swimming, whatever it is, especially during the winter months. Um, have regular checkups with the doctor, with your eyesight and hearing, everything like that. And if you get to the point when you think, well, actually, I cannot ride this motorcycle because of this mobility impairment, then it's time to change your motorcycle. You may want to consider, as you're getting older, different times of year to ride a motorcycle. Let's say you might want to ride out in the warm weather as opposed to the cold weather. You might want to ride out only in dry weather as opposed to wet weather. You know, that kind of thing. So you have to start picking and choosing when is the right time for you to ride your motorcycle and then analyse 
is that motorcycle right for you in these conditions on this particular day? There might come a time when you think, right, okay, I can't ride this type, I'm gonna to have to change to another type. You know, a much lighter, a much smaller bike, something that's a lot easier. It might even mean that you get down and you step down to a moped or a, or a scooter or something like that. Personally, you know, I'm a big guy, but I love scooters. I think they're, they're great machines. Especially in urban areas, I think they're brilliant. They're light, they're nimble, they're a step through. You just step through the bike as, as opposed to cocking your leg over. They're really practical. I think they're brilliant machines. So, you know, f from my point of view, yes, I ride a big motorcycle and I've ridden all sorts of big motorcycles, but I've got no problem in stepping down. As long as I'm keeping myself on two wheels, that's what I'm okay for in that regard. So there might come a point uh, after a while that actually you really can't ride a motorcycle anymore or any form of motorcycle, or any form of motorcycle with two wheels, you know, with a physical capability, uh, eyesight, hearing, whatever. So, you know, if the law allows, you may be able to go on to um, a three-wheeled motorcycle, a trike, or tricycle. Um, you might even go on to a four-wheeled, I'll say a motorcycle, but a quad, if you know what I mean. Okay, there are lots of variations that, you know, you don't have to go to the custom bike or trike or quad scene. You can get these bikes right out of the dealership now. Um, so whatever it is, you can still experience that open to the elements kind of riding but you're not actually on a motorcycle anymore you're on a trike or a quad and at some point let's face it you might come to that age where you really don't feel safe on a motorcycle anymore you, know, you might have back issues mobility issues you know balance issues vision issues hearing issues whatever it is and you just physically cannot ride anymore well if that's the case it's just something we all have to get on with really now, this has got nothing to do with a particular age. Let's say you reach 80 years old and you say, I'm not allowed to ride a motorcycle anymore. Uh, it is down to you as an individual to take care of yourself, take care of your body, of your well-being, and keep yourself in reasonable shape. You know, keep yourself active, especially as you're getting older. Keep yourself mobile, especially during those non-riding months in the winter, perhaps. You know, just keep yourself active practice riding the motorcycle without actually riding it and then when you come to the spring and it gets warmer and then you can hop on and just go for a ride and you know you're you're already be in good physical condition but it's really about analyzing yourself are you and be honest with yourself be really honest with yourself are you able to ride this motorcycle safely and still enjoy it Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video. I hope you found this useful. Um, lots of the work that I did in the emergency services over the years was dealing with uh, motorcycle accidents of all descriptions, of all ages. But one of the key areas that I started to realize was that after a winter break uh, in the spring, there was always a spike in motorcycle accidents. And sometimes a lot of that was to do with the elderly. Now, I'm not talking about 80 years old here. I'm talking about middle-aged onwards, just having a long break, getting on the bike, and then they're not physically fit enough to be able to just jump on and go for a ride. Okay, they need to build up to it. So that's something that we've looked at, and it is a known phenomenon. So after the winter break, get on the bike, lots of accidents occur for all different sorts of reasons, but a contributing factor will be your, your, your competency, your proficiency, and your physical ability to be able to ride uh, the motorcycle and also to be able to perceive and register uh, incoming hazards as well. Well, I hope you found this useful and I hope you carry on riding for many years to come, uh, as I hope I will as well. Uh, please leave lots of comments below and uh, subscribe hit the notifications bell and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you didn't give it a thumbs down that's fine you know that'll help me to you know develop the channel and carry on producing videos that you may want to watch as well now also check out the description below lots of links uh, for all the social media channels as well uh, also to the website at revelatorhealth.wordpress.com now if you want to get onto the mailing list as well 
go to the contacts page uh, on uh, revelatoralf.wordpress.com and just uh, subscribe there and that will actually give you all the details on how to be added to the mailing list then anytime you get a brand new video or any new information then fire off an email and you'll be the first to know before it's released anywhere else right i'm off to ride my motorcycle and i hope you are too catch you on the next video whenever that is cheers now